Welcome back to Demon Slayer Anime Review Episode Number Three. This I'm covering episodes 15 to 21, the Mount Nazamaga arc. Yeah, this arc is essentially put for the anime right now, anyways. Until the new starts up, it is by far the longest arc of the entire series. Yep. Well, here's the thing. It's seven episodes adapting from a 17-chapter arc. Here's what happens in this particular arc. Well, first, Tojiro chases around Nezuko, who basically has developed an infatuation for her. Yep. Chases around. He basically wants to be her and wants to be offensive with Tojiro. And Ezro, the... The let's just say let's call him the wild boar demon, not even the demon slayer, because he wears a boar head. Yeah, he basically is annoyed by this, and then eventually get their assignment to go to Mount. I pronounce this place's name. Nagamito. They say they head there immediately, but they don't say what the mission is. Nope, just head there immediately. They're told this by the messenger crow. Yep. And then they get there. <coughs> Excuse me. And they come across a demon slayer who just happens to run away from the mountain. And obviously he's pulled back via string. Yes. This arc is pretty much demon slayers versus spider demons. Yep. Freaking spider demons. Now, here's kind of the strange thing about this particular group of people. They are a family who are pretending to be family. They don't feel this until, like, toward the end, like, toward the end of the arc. And the thing is, the father is this big, huge, hulking guy with a spider's head. Who also, later on, shed his own skin. For a second skin, for some strange reason. I don't know why. Yeah, a lot of this with this group is never properly explained. Yeah, as for where the heck these people came from... Apparently, Ryu just, that that's the name of the, the main villain of this arc, this little kid, who happy one of the 12 moons. Yeah, because like in the previous arc, counts to this, the lower, lower moon 6, this one's lower moon 5. Yes, lower moon 5. And here's the thing, Tojiro does not confront him until like the third to last episode of the... Actually, it's more like the fourth or last episode of the arc. Basically, a little over halfway through is when I get friends because he's basically battling these little spiders. And the first part of it, he's battling the mother of the group. Yeah, this smoking hot woman who Tojiro defeats. How the hell he finds her is basically Israel basically uses his beast spirit sensei power <coughs> to find him. As for how Tojiro knows how the heck he knows he has his power. Never explain. Eventually, he does find her, and he gives her a very painless death. Yep, made her death very quick because apparently she was forced into this. Yeah, apparently it's revealed, with the exception of the father, that all members of this pretend family are were forced into this. They were forced to basically kill people. And he gets roused, basically, sort of his backstory in the arc, where he became a demon, basically, by Kazumori just, just happened to finding him. But he actually had a frail body before he actually became a demon, turned a demon, and then he eventually killed his own parents. Yep. All because, well, he, because he had because he had he had no choice in the choice no matter. Yeah, of course, before his mother passes away, she basically expresses regret for giving him a frail body before she passes. Yeah, this is not revealed until the final episode of the arc. Yep, and then like while he's battling him, that's when the the guy who first showed up back in episode one, he finally makes a return. Yeah, he first uh Garou, the one who's voiced and dubbed by Johnny M. Bosch. Yeah, he makes a return to this. Although the insect Hema, that's the, the these are the higher ups, basically <coughs> the highest position that's not the head of the demon core. Yeah. These two show up and they pretty much just clean house. And Zenzo battles one, one of the other family members who's basically a human's head and a freaking spider. Yeah, and, also, and one of them they saw looked like 
Yeah, it kind of reminded me of the thing, from the the film, the thing. John Carpenter's thing with the the head with the spider legs. Yeah, that's what's kind of reminded me of. I'm not sure if the writer of the series, basically the manga, actually took inspiration from this. I have no idea. He may have. It's distinctly possible. How in the world these people got this way? It's kind of explained the spider one, or the human head. Apparently he poisoned them to turn him into these things. Okay. Yeah. And then Zenzo basically bows him. First tries running away, and then he basically activates his thunder power and kills him. And despite the fact he's also been poisoned, he's been bitten by a spider. At some point he was. And eventually that defeats him, he lands right on top of the house that's held together by the spider's web. And also, yeah, then he gets knocked out, and then the insect woman shows up, and she basically just heals him. Yep. Basically gives an antidote for his physical condition, and basically gives a lot of praise. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'm going to try to what this woman's name is, because this is the arc that technically is her first appearance. Her name is Shishanabu. Mm hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah, the guy your guy's name is Inosuke. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's something you know, after the first episode that it takes, you know, like. Toward the appearance in this arc right here, where Tomika basically just happens to show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, he shows up, says Tojiro from the actual uh, lower moon, by showing off his eighth water breathing ability, Dead Calm, which apparently only he knows this one. Okay. Now, Tojo only knows just 10. He does not know the 11th one. <coughs> now, for Tojo, this is the first time in two years he's encountered the guy. Though he does just by name for some strangers. He's like, hey, I remember you. You tried to kill my sister two years ago. Yeah. Also, when the upper, the lower moon demon, he basically at one point was trying to take Nezuko as his own sister. Because... He didn't like the way that Tojiro was basically insulting what he thought was an actual family bond through terror to basically terror and fear. Yeah, Tojiro's point of view, yeah, that's not a family. That's not a family bond. That's a for, that's a forged. That's a fake bond. Yeah, and because him pointing it out, he gets upset and basically tries to kill him. But at one point, he also tried to kill Nut 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 Nesuko as well. He also has a new ability during this arc where, well, actually, it's a little family technique where you turn his sword into fire and tries to kill him that way. And of course, well, Nesuko does her own blood demon arc where basically burns all the threads holding her. Looks like we're almost going to cut her into pieces. Yeah, something though, she just she doesn't make appearance in the whole arc. She's mentioned a few times. Like, Half of the first episode, she doesn't show up until like the third to last episode of the arc. That's when she finally shows up again. Yeah, and as for to as for Incio, he is pretty much battling the father, and he has a tough time battling him. Eventually, he does chop up one of his arms. Of course, the guy runs away when he sheds his second skin, and he tries to stab him in the throat. And eventually, even though he's severely wounded, at one point he nearly, he nearly gets his head crushed by the guy. Look how Tomiko shows up and just slices the pieces. Just like that. <coughs> yes. Shiro encounters the, one of the female demons. And this is the same one that Tojiro basically protected her in a way from her own fake brother. Mm-hmm. Yep. By convincing him not to kill her. Yeah. So she had to go kill more demon slayers. Yeah, and during all of this is going on, like, even though that this battle is going on, 
they have this cleanup crew. Yes, a the Demon Core has got a cleanup crew, which this kind of makes sense basically for a core to have. I mean, how else basically if you're gonna clean up dead bodies after a big humongous battle? I mean, I get the fact, yes, the, the demons turn to ash as they're killed, but who takes care of the slayers? Yeah, that's the whole point of the cleanup crew. They pretty much just take up they pretty much take up all the wounded, clean up the place as quickly as possible. While treating people with the best ability, which I think is a smart move. And apparently the female demon, I don't know the woman's name. Apparently she's responsible for killing about eight like they they claim about eighty people. She she only claimed because of five, even though she they claim they claim eighty. I'm like, okay, where the heck did this come from? And her basically using this whole thing of turning people into a like rabbit people in a ball look with like, yeah, this character this particular demon only showed up like a couple times before this. Then I know what her ability was. Like, oh, apparently her ability is a constrained yard. Okay, fine. And then she's given a very painful death by poisoning. Yep. Get killed by Senoral by with her sword, which apparently she cannot cut people's head up, but she can poison them instead. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. And and at the end of the arc, because she finds out that Nezuko is a demon, and of course Tundra is traveling with her. Yeah, they try like she tries to kill him, but Tundra basically stops him. But somehow HQ finds out about this, and they order both of them taken to custody. Lucky enough, they remember that Net Net Net's gonna put her in the in the wooden box that she travels. Oh yeah, she notices that she can shrink down to her. She, she can shrink. Also, she's chased by the female swordswoman who actually showed up in at the end of the first arc of the series. Yeah, this is her first appearance, isn't it? Pointed out by Zenzo. Yeah, who pretty much spends the last episode of the arc. Just, well, how should I put this? Yeah, he pretty much spends, he spends the last episode of the arc pretty much returning to a freaking mummy without, with the exception of his eyes. Like, the, like, he remembers the girl from the final exam, but he doesn't talk to her. At all. Nope, she doesn't. At all. And I gotta say, very beautiful woman. Heck, even Sasenro is a very beautiful woman, too. Yes, that's a good beautiful one as well, but yeah. The one thing that you gotta say about the series is that the women are freaking gorgeous. Yeah, no ugly women the whole series, which is quite something. Mm -hmm. Yep. But, not much else to say about this arc. It's just that the ending of this, the last episode, is the setup for the very final arc of the season. Which is all the Heshera, all the higher ups, simply put, confronting Tudro. Tojiro, yes. Yeah. And that's how the final episode ends. With him basically face to face with almost pretty much all of them. Which is going to be interesting sending up the, for, for the, for the final arc of the season. Which we'll talk about in episode 4. Yep. So yeah, that's it for this particular... Uh, not much else to say about this particular set of episodes. Really good. I like the fact that we get... We still get a continuing backstory. And Zenzo, you get to see his backstory as well, where where a person who trained him apparently was one of the retired pillars. Yeah, he's the one who trained him, who he called Gramps. He had a lot of respect for him. And in fact, because, because him and being coward, like, run away multiple times. But he completed his training. Apparently, even though the, the Thunder Pillar, uh, Thunder Breathing has three forms, he only masked the first one. And he used that to kill the Spire Demon. Yep. But yeah. As the go, basically, you don't. You get a little bit of his backstory as well in this arc. Yeah, apparently his mother abandoned him when he was a child because she had no choice. Looked like she had no choice in the matter. <coughs> yeah. But not much else to say. I mean, I'm looking forward to watching the next arc when I get a chance to watch it, okay? So yeah. That's it for this particular view. My next view, I'm hoping to do a review of the newest episode of One Piece. Okay, see you next view. Bye.